so what we got here is a laser gate and I'll take the car a little bit forward and you can see now it's crossing the beam there's a laser model there something like this part here and then there's a sensor on the other side hiding there and of course just a display and every time the car passes there I calculate the previous run and I start the next one and also on the screen you can see that we're showing the last and the best one fun 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 easy project what took forever was to set up the laser and the sensor to each other but once it was done it's a lot of fun so let's go a little bit into details the hardware behind the gate is the KY008 laser transmitter model, which is basically like those uh, po laser pointers that you get in the stores uh, on a breakout board that allows you to control it with a digital output. On the other side is the receiver that as long as a laser beam or a very very bright light is pointed in this point of the sensor you will get a high output on its output leg and of course if the if the beam is broken you'll get a low again allowing you to basically having like a switch which is exactly what triggers the gate the laser model has an S that's the signal and usually has a minus for the ground on the other side that's the plus, connect that to the 5 volt, this is to the ground and this is to a signaling pin from the Arduino if you like I just shorten between this and the 5 volt in third thing on the sensor, especially if you buy it with this kind of a breakboard there is a nudge here, this is the flat side and there's a nudge here my instinct told me to connect it the other way around, I almost burned that the first one I've used so you have to connect it when the bulb is this way and this is the direction you want to point your laser to this one is said that this is the VCC, this is the out and this is the ground so this goes to 5 volt, this goes to the ground and this one goes to whatever pin you want to use on the Arduino I've used pin number 2 so back to the track, I'm gonna lift the track up and show you all the parts underneath it so, I removed the track and now I can show you, this is the gate. Let's bring the Arduino to the front here and we'll take a look at the parts. There you go. So now, as you can see, this is the laser and this is the receiver. They're connected with wires, they're sharing the ground and the plus and I just um, I, sh I shortened the signal and the 5 volt here so it's basically turned on all the time those two wires get to here sharing the ground and the plus and then the signal comes out and you can see I'm putting 5 volt ground and the signal goes to pin number 2 and of course we got the screen and you can see got many pins so making my life a little bit easier I just made a connector for it so every time I will have to use it I can just plug it in here at this side and most of the connections are done on the mega on this section here so I just made a connector that fits in just like this <laughs> of course when you try to do it on camera there you go, just plugged in. The extra wire is the reset. I haven't needed to use it till now. It's worked well with the Mega, but I know sometimes it gives a hard time. I just wanted to make it available through this wire. Okay, so I put it back together so I can demonstrate to you how it works. I had to glue it here. As you can see, I've got a trigger. So every time I'm crossing the beam, I'm basically getting another lap here and you can see the time is running the reason I had to glue it here because it was set up in a way that the track was putting it down so those were exactly one in front of the other and this is the only thing that is really a little bit of hard with the system is just getting it right in front of the other this is like a crappy Chinese thing it's not even putting the beam out straight so but, as you can see, it works. It takes a little bit of time of faddling with it and getting the right angle. But it works, and this is how it works. Every time I'm crossing the bin, 
is basically sending a low signal to here and I'm starting the read count. And let's go to the computer and I'll show you some code. The code is pretty simple together with the simple hardware of a digital gate and a display. So as you can see, I'm adding the graphic uh, library here for the GLSD. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description to, for the pinout and for the library itself. I'm defining variables for the labs. This is the current run start millis, meaning when the last when the current run started. So whenever I'll show you, whenever I'm crossing the bin, I'm setting that that variable. Second one is last run in millis, meaning how long the last run took in millis, uh, and the best run in millis. Of course, current lap and saved millis. I'm just used this several times, so I just want to declare it in advance. Those three. Uh, for the three sections, uh, the time, the, the current running time, the last lap, and the best lap. Those two variables I'm using for display, and I'll show you in the end, I'm, I'm referring them for a function that gives back a value that I'm sending in millis, and I, give, and I get in return how long it took in seconds, point millis. Um, this section here is only for the, it's basically for the gate, defining the, the pin number, and the state, the last state, uh, debounce time and debounce delay. If you look at the example of digital debounce, it's basically the same exact logic. Setup, I'm setting the, in, the, the sensor pin as an input, delaying 15. The reason I'm doing here is that I'm allowing the laser to get turned on and for the sensor to sense it before I'm doing my first test and so I won't get any false positive. I'm initiating the screen I'm defining all the areas, and you can look at the code of the GLSD. It's pretty simple. Selecting a font, putting some text, and resetting all the variables. In the loop, what I do is I'm basically checking the state of the, of the pin. And again, by the debounce, I'm checking if the, la if the reading is not the last reading, I'm starting the debounce time. If it's been past the debounce delay, and it's not the same state, I'm setting the new state. And here is the major section of the logic of, of, of the button is, if it's low, meaning if I just broke the bin, I'm saving the milli so I can do all the math around it. If it's not the first lap, because if it's the first lap, I don't have a previous data. Uh, um, the last run in millis is the saved millis, which is the one I just saved before, minus the, when, the, when the current run started. So this is how long it took. This is the last run. Now, if the last run is lower than the best run, or the best run is zero, meaning there was no best run before, then save the best run as the last, last run value. And here is where I start a new run, is current start millis is the saved one, and I'm upping one on the lap. Um, this is just to set, this is for the debounce, so I'm setting the last sensor, sensor state as the current reading. And here is the printing section. This is where I'm printing the lap, uh, I'm saving the millis here, so I'll have a reference again. If it's not the current, if it's not the first lap, I'm calculating the, the saved millis. Again, I've saved the millis here. Millis when the, uh, the run started, and, and I'm bringing it back through these two values, and I'll show you the function in a second. So I'm getting from the difference between the current millis and the, when the, the run started, I'm basically getting how long I'm running since I broke the gate. Um, and if not, I'm doing just zero, so the screen will show zero. And you can see I'm using the values here, and, and I'm putting them with two digits of a second and three digits on the milliseconds. And, it's, and, it's, and this is the current run, and doing the same math for the last run, sending it the last run value. Same goes for best run, and sending it the best run values in millis. And this is the function. You can see I'm just getting a value with two reference parameter and I'm giving it the value of that divided by a thousand, meaning how many seconds, full seconds are there with, within this value, and then removing those thousand from the current value and getting whatever is left in millis. Well, this is the entire code, pretty simple as I said. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you'll build something like that. If you do, send me a link in the comments, uh, like, share, and subscribe for the channel.